So hi guys, this is another Mrs H Psychology. This time it's on research methods, specifically the sign test and how to do sign test um, pain free. Okay, so nice easy sign test. Got a reference here to the Hodder textbook and welcome to some of a Talatu and Kaylee, my most recent subscribers. Really hope these are helping you wherever you are in the world and I'm hoping that you're finding them useful. So with sign tests, first of all, can we answer these questions? So to all my students um, as well, you should be able to answer these. What method of investigation would we be using for a sign test? Which level of measurement is used and which design is used? So just pause for a minute and see if you can answer those. So in answer to our question, Selecting stats test, this is the little program, the little table that you should learn. So here we're looking at, first question is, are we looking at correlation or are we looking for a difference between two groups? Okay, so if it's a correlation, if we're looking for a relationship, these are the only test tests you should be using. If you're looking for a difference between two groups, you can use any of these tests, or I say any, but actually there are requirements. Remember, these are the only parametric tests because parametric tests have to have interval ratio data. So these are non-parametric tests. Now for sign test, we have to be using a related design, so either repeated measures or matched pairs, and we would be only having, all we have is nominal data, so data that is in discrete categories. So moving on to our answers, answers to those starter questions, which method of investigation is used? It's got to be a difference, not a correlation. So in other words, it's an experiment, not a correlation. Which level of measurement is used? So we would be saying nominal data. And which design? It's a related design. So in other words, either repeated measures or matched pairs. Now with sign test, we, if you like, calculate something called an observed value. And that is then used to make a comparison with whatever the number is in the critical value, in our published critical values stats tables. Okay, with sign test, the observed value has to be equal to or less than the critical value for the results to be significant. And I'm gonna talk you through that, so don't worry about that, I'll explain all of this. It is useful though at this point for you to bear in mind this rule of R, which a, another teacher has come up with, which is a great idea. The rule of R is that if the test has the um, letter R in it, so for example, repeated measures, whatever, then, it, um, sorry, for example, sign test, Wilcoxon, related T, whatever. Okay, so you look to see whether it has an R in it. If it has an R, then the um, observed or calculated value has to be equal to or more than. If it hasn't got an R in, so for example, sign test, we would say it has to be equal to or less than. Think of it in, in this way that the word less doesn't have an R in it, the word more does. Okay, so if it's if the test has the letter R in it, the um, observed value has to be equal to and more than. Okay, so we'll have a look at that as we go through. Um, and obviously the other thing we need to then decide is are our um, results significant? If they are significant, we accept our alternate hypothesis and reject the null. If they're not significant, we accept the null hypothesis and we reject the alternate. But again, I'll show you this as we go through. So let's have a look at some examples. Okay, so I'm gonna use reference to the Hodder textbook, the AQA A-level textbook, page 299. Great example here and it talks you through this. So the example I'm gonna start with is their example. So here it says a food manufacturer wants to know if its new breakfast cereal called Fizz Buzz is going to be as popular as its existing product, Kitty Slot. Ten participants try both and they choose which they prefer. One participant prefers the existing product, seven the new and two like both equally. So if you were given this data or you had data, you were actually doing this, in order to calculate this, this is what we would do. The first step would be to produce a little table like this. These are our participants, this is their preference, and all we do is we put a little sign, a little plus or a minus, depending on which they prefer. So participant one prefers fizz buzz, so for the sake of argument, we're gonna use a little plus sign. It does not matter whether you use a plus or a minus, 
for the preference as long as you stick with the same sign all the way through. So fizzbuzz, we're going to say let's use a little plus sign. If it's kiddies lot, we're going to use a little minus sign. Okay. If they have no preference, their results are the same, then we just put, we would write in omit or ignore. Okay, and it's really important that you do that. So let's look at this. First of all, we do our table if we need to. Sometimes the information is given to you in the exam, so you don't need to produce a table, but I'll show you an example of that. So you then use a plus or minus, as I've just indicated. You calculate the observed value. In other words, you add up, if you like, the number of pluses and minuses, but actually all we're really interested in are the least frequent sign, the least frequent. So your observed value for sign test is going to be this least frequent sign. So here it is just one because we've only got one who prefers kitty slop. So we've got our least frequent is the, if you like, the minus, and that is that we've only got one of those. So our, our, our S, our S value, our observed value for S is going to be one. We then need to work out our N score, and N just represents the number of participants. So this is the, the number of participants. We have 10. However, what's really important is we need to ignore or omit the, the, those participants who had no difference in their scores. All right, so we had a 10 initially, 10 minus these two, so n is going to equal 8 in this example. Okay, the other thing we need to know is are we looking at a one tailed or two tailed test? How, have we got a one or two tailed hypothesis? In other words, is it directional or non directional? So if we look back here, this food manufacturer wants to know if one of these cereals is more popular than the other. They don't know which direction the results are going to go in. And if you don't know the direction, then you would use a two-tailed or a non-directional hypothesis. We also need to know which level of significance we're going to use. And here we'd be using 5%. Why do we use 5%? You guys hopefully can answer this because it's our conventional level. So we would always use a 5% significance because that gives us a nice balance between allowing for some chance to occur, but not too much. So conventional is the word you would use, 5%. And then we now need to refer to our critical values table. Okay, and we need to remember the sign that the calculated value, which we've calculated, we're going to compare with what is in the table. So that must be equal to or less than whatever is in the table. So let me show you this. Okay, so this is the critical value for sign tests, little value table. Somebody's produced this, this will always remain the same for sign test. Okay, so a couple of things that we need to look at. First of all, we need to, you need to be really careful in the exam that you are looking for the right hypothesis or the right test look down the column for the relevant one. Here we're using a two-tailed test, but if you notice there is also a column for a one-tailed test. We're always going to be going for, unless we're, something's specified, otherwise we're going to be looking for the 5% level, okay, the 5% significance level. And here it's, this is the column for 5% for a two-tailed, but note that this would be the one that we would be looking for for a one tail test. So we're going to look down here. We know that we've got an N score of 8. Okay, and we know that our observed value is 1. So this is the column we're going to be looking at. We need to look across from our N score and the number we need to compare is our observed value of 1 with 0 here in this column. So we need to take our observed value and say is it equal to 0? No, it's not because our observed value in this example is 1, it's not equal to 0. And remember in sign test the observed value has to be equal to or less than the critical value. Well 1 is not less than, than 0 and therefore we conclude our results are not significant. So then we would be looking at this statement and I would recommend that you learn to use this as a template. So you would just correct this statement, 
um, depending on what your details are. So you would say the results are or not significant as the observed value, the calculated value of S, whatever it is, okay, is higher or lower than the critical value, whatever that is, and so on and so forth. So let me show you what you would actually be writing. Results are not significant in this example as the observed value is one, which is higher than the critical value, which is zero. Okay, when n equals eight for a two-tailed hypothesis with a probability significance level of 5%. So the null can be accepted and the alternate rejected. And literally you must get into the habit of writing that out if they ask you about whether a result is significant. So let's look at another example. Okay, so here's another example for you to work out. Psychologist wanted to work out whether there'd be any differences in pupil test scores if she offered a £10 prize for every significant improvement in scores. She tested them as usual, then retested them on new material, but with a clear instruction that they would receive £10 if they improved their score. Her results were two students went down, eight students' scores went up, and two remained the same. So she decided to carry out sign test she decided to divide them into two groups after scores were in. So were they, had they improved or not? So what is the calculated value of sign? Explain your answer, show your workings. All right, so pause the video now. Just have a go at that. What is our calculated value, first of all? So hopefully you got this right, S equals 2 because we always take the lowest, the least frequent sign, so the smallest value. And remember we disregard any, any scores that have no change, that there are no differences. Our n score is 10 because we originally had 12 participants in this example, but we're going to dismiss 2 as they have the same value. Okay. So now pause the video and try to have a go at this sentence. See if you can calculate and work it out whether it's significant or not. Okay guys, so you should have something like this. The results are not significant as the observed value of S is two, which is higher than the critical value of one, where N equals 10 for a two-tailed hypothesis with a probability or significance level of 5%. So the null hypothesis can be accepted and alternate rejected. So let's have a look at another example. Okay, uh, here we go, some other sample questions. So here we have question one, justify why she used sign test, so equivalent of about four marks. Then uh, another example, um, psychologists wanted to work out whether there'd be an improvement, any improvement in scores of 14 pupils when they were tested in the same place where they'd learnt material compared with being tested in a different venue. She allowed them to revise in the usual classroom, then gave them a test in that classroom. But for the second test, she moved them to a new classroom and compared their results. And these were the scores. So here the question is, what is the calculated value of sign? Explain your answer. What other information should we know? what's missing, what other info do we need, and then using the table provided, calculate if these results would be significant, if she believed the scores would be better in the same place. So just pause, have a go at those, I'll show you the table in a minute. Okay, so when you've got on to question four, there's our significance table for sign test. So just use that to try to work out whether the results are significant and I'll move down and show you the answers in a minute. So pause again. Okay, so justify why she used sign test. Well, we'd be saying things like it's a related design, in other words, repeated measures because the participants were involved in both conditions. Okay, and it's nominal data because she was using discrete categories. In other words, did their scores go up or not, for example. Um, the second bit, we've got the details above. So what was the calculated value of sign? Sign was S was five, the least frequent sign. And of course, we reject the three participants who had the same score in both conditions. What other info do we need? Well, we need to know what our N number is. 
number of participants in total minus the three, so that is n equals 11, and also whether it is one or two-tailed test, directional or non-directional, and here it should be one-tailed because the stem says any improvement in scores, so we're looking for an improvement, and also the belief that scores will go in a specific direction, okay? And also which significance level to use, again, you should be saying we're using the 5% level, um, et cetera, et cetera. So using the table, are they significant? Okay, so we can use this. Okay, so there's your answer. And we would be using that sentence, the results are not significant as the observed value of five is higher than the critical value of two when n equals 11 for a one-tailed test. Um, and for one tailed hypothesis with 5% level of significance, so the null can be accepted and the alternate rejected. And that is the end of that. Hopefully that um, has been useful for you. Uh, hopefully those little exercises, I mean, it's worth you running through it again if you're not sure, but hopefully those steps will um, help you understand this in the exam.